Hi, welcome back to the Dylan Rounds case. Welcome if you're currently here in the live chat. Today we're going to be taking a look at some material documents of public information. Let's just make that clear first of all. Public information. Okay. Credit shout out to a user called Candice. Not Candice Cooley, but a different Candice who provided this material and it's about Don Hately. We've not finished with him. I want to take a look today to see, you know, what's his background like with owning certain parts of land, right? Just sift through with the material, the pictures, what we've got, on top of some additional other files, just to see if any key names, key locations show up. I think there's about 35 different slides. So there's a lot to get through, okay? You can share your thoughts, opinions down below as we do go along, okay? And then, if possible, or just scanning the area, we'll go onto the maps and try and find these designated spots owned by these individuals. You might be wondering, why? Why look at this? Is this present to Dylan Rounds? Well, possibly it is. You think about it. If you've got some land and you own it, you're not trespassing are you? Because you own it. You have access to it. If things are present on that land which can be used to dispose of someone like Dylan, then you might take full advantage of that, hence why we're doing this video, okay? Let's move on over to the first key part, which are the documents tied with Donald Haightley. Okay, so here we are. As you see, it says Donald Don Haightley. We look at the first part, and I will read most of it out, even if it doesn't quite make sense to me. It might more likely make sense to you, all right? So the first title, Approval of MP640, Sand and Gravel. The date, the 9th, the 30th, 2019. So this is obviously some time ago, though a positive is, with this saying 2019, when we go on Google Earth later, that satellite imagery is of 2019, so it might be of more relevance when we check back, okay? Status approved by David Ur, drafted by Beddingfield Andrew. Department, coal and mineral. Okay, coal and mineral. So what? Mining. Is this associated with... Don Haightley mining at some point, some kind of business. I know I've I've heard of him having a business in the past. I'm not sure if this associates to it or not. Bear in mind, with this being 2019 as well, I guess this is before meeting Dylan Rounds, Larry Rounds, I assume, because Justin Rounds said it was winter 2020 when Don Haightley was introduced to the grandparents. So I'm not quite sure what happened in 2019, a year before that, but the location is what's most important here. Contract details, Donald Haightley, his name. Well, there you go, Donald Haightley. Address, P.O. Box, 1487, Wendover, Utah. So this is the address, well, it says P.O. Box. Now, just let me know in the chat because I don't know anything about P.O. Box. I've heard people bring it up before. I've seen YouTubers do it as well. Is a P.O. Box a collection point where you can receive mail, such as fan mail from people online, but it's not near you? It's like, like middle grounds nearby, but not outside of your house, like a mailbox? Is that the correct way of saying it? Because with that saying Wendover, Utah, I assume Don Haightley wasn't in Wendover in 2019. He was living elsewhere, I assume. Let me know your thoughts down below in the chat, right? You might be able to piece things together. County, Box Elder, Beneficiary, School. Total acres, 20. 20 acres sand and gravel. And when it says beneficiary, a school, does that mean that's what, uh, I don't know, I'm not an expert with this. 
Land Parcels, GIS Review of Description, right? 20 acres. 20 acres, I mean, it's not that much. You compared to that talk of Dylan's grandfather, um, Larry Rounds, supposedly owning 640 acres in Lucin, and Don Haley is only set as 20. Huh. Now, contract details. Let's move on to the next and get a better understanding. Background. This sand and gravel pit is known as the Lucin Hill Pit. The material is historically used for road maintenance. This is an historic and an ongoing use of the subject lands. No additional lands will be disturbed. The lands have been pre-designated for sand and gravel sales on a non-competitive basis. Financial revenue... The lease has paid the application fee of $250 and the $200 annual rent. Summary, this permit is approved for a term of one year. The production royalty is 50 cent, is that right? Per bank cubic yard and the annual rental is $10 per acre. So, it's known as... The Lucin Hill Pit. Let's go on maps and see if we can find it. So I typed it in and this is what it came up with. Lucin Pit. It was named on the sheet, the documents, as Lucin Hill Pit. So I assume it's basically the same thing but shortened. And actually this area I have seen before because when I previously went on maps to type in mines or mine shafts in Lucin, this was one of the marked locations that popped up. So, what does it look like visually speaking when we zoom in? Huh? I mean, you look at the ground. I don't know what to make of it, really. It looks like there's some height to it and depth. It drops down you can see the side of the wall like a wash that height by the side of it is a dirt road as you can see here hmm. and it is just merely a dirt road loose in pit somewhere down here now if we zoom in here don't know if you can see but i can see piles of wood on top of one another like sticks as you'd see here, but on ground level, bigger in size. Now, it is common to find planks of wood and wood piled on top of one another nearby a mine shaft. I've seen it before, just like with the Kenny Veach one. So that's nothing odd, but it's a good indication that a mine, mine shaft is close by. It's hard to tell exactly where it is because there's a lot of black dots hmm. but if this is supposedly known as Lucin Hill maybe because of it being raised and having depth to it and overlooking somewhere this is supposedly where it's at so hmm so what Don Haitley owns this land or, and I'll just say it now, because it is raw, I'm not going to be an expert with this. Something's going through my mind is when it said contractor, the contract, under a person's name. Have they been assigned to do a job in this area, to do with the, the gravel and sand? Was it to create some kind of cut-through route? But then it said beneficiary school. Well, it can't be a building a school, right? Is it in the name of a school? I don't know what beneficiary means, to be honest. I'm limited to certain terms. But, you know, with this being 2019 and Don Haitley being present in the area, somewhere or another, whether it be him owning this spot, 20 acres of it, or him having a contract to fulfil, just simply because I'm trying to think back of his past history, his background, right? That's what I'm thinking of. Can I flip the image, possibly? 
just sit down for a second. Back's killing me. Even though we haven't exactly got the 3D mode, you can see how it dips down. Can you see? Is it possible that this is a wash? I don't know. It looks like... Hmm. But then you've got that dirt road there. Interesting. Now, it's quite important, this, because it's not too far away from the Lucin Airport. We'll return back to this spot shortly, okay? We zoom out. Look what's just down here. Lucin Airport. We have seen it quite often now. Ivor Zadowski, this is where he's located at. But doesn't seem to be, hasn't been interviewed since. Not much has gone on. Some people are questioning, does he care about Dylan? Others will be saying, well, he probably doesn't even know Dylan, right? But it's within Lucin, you know, small population, ghost town, two, three people at the time. You know, even though it might be vast and you might be a couple of miles away, you're going to know about everyone that's present in the area in a way because there's not many people to meet. You might have seen him drive by, pass by on the road, you know. So what's going on there? And why has he been so quiet? Why has he not appeared in interviews? Why has he not maybe joined in with the searchers, right? Can Candice Cooley confirm that? It's just because you've had people from... Montello, Nevada, which are in a completely different state across the border, and they've come in to help to look for Dylan. And yet a person directly within Lucen, that lives in Lucen, that's much closer to Dylan in distance than anyone from Montello. And yet Ivor Zadowski was keeping quiet, keeping his head down. There have been talks, as said, in the past that he was in, in the area at the time Dylan went missing, so he's got an alibi, he was elsewhere. But still... Is he not participating in helping, looking? Wouldn't that make sense? Or what? Hmm. Now with Don Haitley as well. Someone did give coordinates at one point to do with Don Haitley. I can't remember the exact coordinates. Can't remember exactly where it was at. But there was a spot... Right? Like, what's this? What's this area here? Hmm? When you get these bare patches on the land, just sand, soft, smooth-looking aerial view, what's caused that? Is it a dried-up pond? Could it be? you got all these, like, roots. Not literally, but they look like roots. And they tend to be near water holes, from what I've seen in Montella. So maybe they only appear where there's water. This supposedly is some kind of container, also containing water for the cattle, for the animals on the land, the farmland. Now, Arizona Traveller mentioned that recently in one of my previous videos. But the way he worded it, it seemed as if he was associating all containers out there as being, like, drinking spots for wildlife and animals and cattle. If that's truly the case, can I just put a marker here so I don't forget about it? Does it remember the other marker as well? Hold on. Does it not? Oh, for fuck's sake... I'll have to type it back in again. But when it comes to other locations, right? And I don't know if I can find them on the spot. When we've seen the other containers scattered. That's power line. I just don't think they're all for drinking out of. Some literally look like storage containers. And it's easy. It's easy to detect them and know what they are. Right? But where is it now? It's so annoying when you can't find it on the spot, but it's typical of that. Now you've got a pond here. You see what I was saying about these roots? 
how to spread out. They only seem to be present wherever there is some kind of water nearby. That's the pattern I've noticed. And why is that like a square? Like a perfect square, almost. Huh. Odd. Something like this. Because it's smaller, it does not look like a cargo crate, a cargo container. This does look like um, just a small box or rectangle, whatever you call it, in which animals drink out of. I can understand that. I can agree with that. I'm sure Arizona Traveller would say the same thing. But I'm not, ref I'm not referring to these. The ones I've been talking about are not like this. They're a different colour. They're a lot bigger in size and a lot wider too. I just hope I can find one. Bear in mind, as we're just going along here, because it is kind of messy, you just talk in a chat about the case or about whatever, as I try and... Not make too much of a failure out of this when trying to locate these containers. Can I just, like, do find a random one on the spot in Montello just to refer to very quickly? Because I can't be asked trying to find them. That. They're literally what seem to be in Lucent. Now, the one closer looks more like a trailer or cabin. Like that. And you see the shadow of it as well. The length of that looks like some kind of storage container, a cargo container, right? They're the ones which are present in loose and scattered about. They don't look like for feeding, drinking animals, right? Because it's, it's, a, it's a solid. It's a container. You see the, the shadows casted off by the side of it. That's what I'm talking about in Lucent, but I just don't think the Arizona Traveller guy understands what I'm saying in uh, my videos. Wasn't there a container somewhere up here? Hmm. Nope. I could just, maybe I could load up a project. Do you know what? Fuck this shit. I'll load up a project right now and then I'll shade the marker. It might be more quicker. Remember all these markers in Lucin? You remember how many there were? Look at all them. So many places to take a look at. If you want to take a look at all of them, you want to see what they're all about? Well, I did a previous video in the past now. There'll be a link down below in the comment section pinned. Make sure to watch them. Some interesting spots and findings. Now, just down here, for example, right? Further away. Mass containers. You look at them, they are containers. Storage ones, right? Yeah, they're not for cattle. There's not like um, an open top one filled with water. No. These are basically the same as, let's try and find one. Nope, there. That is what you saw about that. Look the same as that, right? Because that casts a shadow as well. Maybe nearby next to it could be a small little crate, a small little container filled with water for animals, but that is not, okay? That is not. Do we have any others? There's a pond. Oh, did I already previously mark that one? I did. Huh. Interesting. Little horse shoe there. That does look like it's filled up with water. Yet another pond, but different colour. Hmm. Another pond with a water hole from the looks of it. Right, I can't seem to find any other containers on the spot, but you, you saw one clearly, didn't you? 
that one here. And then the other one, what you saw previously near that digger, which was south of the digger, and it was a blue container, right? just wanted to put that point across because I, I just don't think some people understood me. Loose and pit. Where does it lie within all of this? Red marker, loose and pit, the spot, 20 acres, associated with Don Haitley, 2019, not far away from the grain shed and wash, not far away from the airport. And we can do a quick distance check. I don't know if I can do it well. To be honest, because at this rate, we've been so messy in terms of the routes. It's like, what the f like, what the hell? Put the fucking thing there. Just follow it down, because take in mind, there's a bit where you got to cross on over the wash and the railway tracks, drop down into the ditch, come down here, come there, back roads, back here. Loosen uh, the gate to the grain sheds just about there where I put the marker and then there. About 10, about 11 miles. 11 miles from grain shed, passing the waterhole, passing through, getting onto the other side of the railway tracks, down to um, Loosen. Loosen Pit, Loosen Hill. Supposedly, this is the area which. Don Haley was present at. Hmm, interesting. Now, if that's the case, and let's say, fast forward to 2022, and he's still owning the land, or has some kind of projects ongoing in the area, could this be where Dylan's at? You know, because I said it looked a bit like a wash. I'm not too sure, but it looked like one. And if Candice Cooley is still referring to a wash out there which no one knows of, could this be it? Bear in mind, this is aerial footage, satellite imagery, bird's eye view. It's not boots on ground. So ultimately, I'm not going to know exactly what this area looks like unless there have been other hikers. If other hikers have been in this area near the pit, right? Let me know your thoughts. Um, we know Lance, Ty individually are going to loosen to look to check back in mine shafts, mines that have already been covered. Double checking, so if they just so happen to go to loosen pit, they might be able to film it, document it. Hopefully, Ty Corbin is present. Most likely, he's not. But if someone is watching right now, feel free to pass it on to Ty. I just want to see what he has to say about this and this area and what it looks like visually. Might find out eventually, sometimes it takes time. Okay? Is there any, any markers? Um, no, it's too far away, isn't it? Why not look on the highway? Will it work? Come on. Just hope it's facing the correct way. Right. Yeah, okay. It's very bad quality. My God. What's that there? Oh, it's just a reflection. So it's somewhere over that way. Very difficult to see. Look how bad the image quality is. So bad. So bad. Hmm. Just wanted to see if I could find an event ball. It seems to be. Make sure I'm facing north because it, it always auto rotates, which is annoying. Oh, that's the digger. That's where a supposed mine is, right? Digger there. Then lower down is this, which looks like another storage container with a shadow casted. Not filled with water. That's what I was trying to explain beforehand, right? Hmm. Can't see much else. Still annoying though how it's so easy to lose track of 
these locations, you've got to type it back in again. I don't have a permanent marker at the moment for this place, unfortunately. Maybe it's a good idea to get one. I mean, you've got, like, um, hill, mountain here, but doesn't seem to be named. No word on this place. And you've got another little white box there as well. Has anyone been in this area? Roughly speaking, there are the coordinates on screen. Anyone? It doesn't seem to be named. It's not called Pigeon Peak or Pilot Peak or Bald Eagle Mountain like how the others are called. This is like unnamed, so. I don't know if this is the Pilot Mountain. Uh, not Pilot Mountain, the Lucin Hill, because it is a hill. More of a hill, I guess. Just scouting the outer skirts of it. Bear in mind, I'm still trying to look for Don Haitley's trailer. Not been able to find it yet. People say, you'll find it, you'll find it. Or, and it's like, well, nope. If I couldn't find the grain shed at the start, what hope is there in me finding his trailer without coordinates? Actually, someone did provide coordinates, as I said, but then it was dismissed by others and wasn't the case. I mean, it goes up. Maybe you could walk up it. Probably not a vehicle, then. Hmm. I just think it's still not the most updated imagery satellite. You thought if there were planes in the area, LIDAR and other kinds of aircraft and activity, you thought it would have gone over the area once or twice in 2022 just to get new images. you got a pivot here. Which, you can correct me if I'm wrong, is this Dylan's? Hold on, I, I don't want to do something stupid. Hold on. Make sure I'm not spazzing out. It seems to be the only pivot in the area. I don't see any pivots down here. So, just ask me in the chat. This area here, it's even highlighted by a light box, which is weird. Not far from the airport put the coordinates down question I ask you the coordinates on screen is this the pivot owned by Dylan Rounds is this the pivot which appeared in Dylan Rounds TikTok video let me know this is 2019 imagery so if Dylan is just getting started in the area his actual pivot may have not been developed at that time. That's why I'm asking this question. With this imagery being out of date, it might be missing certain stuff. With this being the only pivot present in the area, I associate it with Dylan. Do you understand my reasoning, whether it's correct or incorrect? Mm -hmm. Regardless, though... It's interesting. There you go, you can see it, that long line, which covers a huge span and radius. The most interesting thing about this spot here, you got some kind of cutout. Looks like piles of wood or something stacked. There appears to be a, a big outline basically fenced off all the way around from the looks of it, if I'm correct in saying. Because it looks like some kind of fencing. Fam. Down here? What's this all about? Take mine, this is 2019. What's all this about? Hmm? Got some boxes, or... Some kind of container, small one, a white one. You've obviously got like trailers, pieces of farming equipment, as you see there. Can't quite identify what they are exactly, but they do look like attachments that would go on the back of a tractor, right? For farming and crops. Maybe some of it is for seeding. That looks like it could be. It's got an arm that comes off and it might spray out seeds or 
cuttings of some event. Question. Are these pieces of equipment associated with the grain shed, Dylan's own equipment, or is it Kurt Wadsworth? Kurt Wadsworth, with time now, seems to have got his own vehicles and bits and bobs out there. So, is any of this his? Yes, no. Drop the coordinate for this location near to the pivot if you want to take a look. Is this still present to this date? Yes or no? The reason why I ask all these questions in addition is because if you remember, when you look back at Dylan's farm, right? With Dylan's farm, there are no trailers present whatsoever. Um, but then, then again, in 2020, there was no trailers present. So it must just be bad timing when the satellite imagery was taken. Dylan was custom farming elsewhere. His trailer's taken away at the time. So it didn't capture him, right? Because you, you can't get everything perfectly aligned right on the right day at the right time. It just doesn't work like that. But then you've got like another like box, square box. And then you've got these two trailers why the hell? Oh my god. Is this Dylan Rounds? There are two trailers. Dylan had two trailers. There is a truck there, but it looks black, not red. Huh. Considering it's a ghost town and there's not many people present, who else could this be? It does not look like campus people camping out there, because this is on site, this is on the land, directly next to the pivot, right? It's past the border, the boundary area, where it looks like there's some kind of fencing going all the way around, hence why you see a big uh, square around it, the perimeter. So if anyone was camping on the area, then it'd be trespassing, because it looks like it's owned by someone, this. But who is it owned by? Because if it's Dylan's pivot, then that could explain this is Dylan's trailers and Dylan's truck, but in a different area in 2019. Does anyone know? Because it's quite important to clear this up so there's no confusion, right? To know Dylan's whereabouts and what he was doing at the time. This, can I put a marker down before I forget? Because I'm sick of forgetting. It just disappears like, oh, for God's sake. Well, I'll, I'll remember it anyway. It's big enough to see. This is Dylan's farm, right? Dylan's farm, where Dylan does his seeding. This is a little pond. And this patchy area where it looks sandy, this is where Dylan's trailers were at, along with some other tractors and bits of equipment, right? You can clearly see the trailers are not there. Not whatsoever. Fast forward to 2020, none either. So if they're not here, where else could they be? Here, possibly. If it's not Dylan, either, then, in your own opinion, who else do you think was staying here, then, on site, on the farmland, near to the pivot? Who else could it be? Hmm? Is there anything else to refer to? Oh, look. A tractor? Weird mound. Is that in operation? Or is it just parked by the side? Wouldn't it be weird if that tractor was on the move when the plane was flying over and captured it, caught in time, frozen, and Dylan's behind that wheel? That's weird, that, if that was the case. Well... 
you see there are still so many places, even when you look on maps and you do the shortcut methods instead of actually boots on ground search, simply bird's eye view. There are so many other spots we have not looked at yet. And this is like an example of it. I have briefly covered over this area, but I didn't notice those trailers at the time. Oh, that is, that is interesting, that. Mm. I said, if anyone knows, if anyone can clear it up, feel free to do so. We look here, that does look like some kind of water hole, and it looks like some kind of water leaking out, or puddles filling up. I know, um, I think it was worded as, in previous interviews, that Candice Cooley was saying how Dylan allowed other farmers to use his water or use his water hole or something and it it like developed relations positive ones showed that Dylan was caring and looking out for the community and people present is this it hmm seems like it and you got all these brown patches once again what are these brown patches because there are so many of them Mainly centred round here, but some are also at the and around the grain shed. Does anyone know? Is it just dirt mounds or sand? It looks like sand, the colour of them. Yeah, when you look at this, it looks very brown and rough and rugged compared to the greener ones which you see here. As you can see, yeah. Interesting. Can I compare the distance of that to the the uh, the other land? I can. Oh, it's it's literally nearby. So from here, so let's say. Um, well, actually, there was a road to it. Three miles from the trailer at the pivot all the way down to over here. Three miles. Interesting. Is there any significance in this location, this spot? We know the grain shed is down here, but on the other side of the wash, around this spot, can we put a coordinate marker on? Somewhere around here. Has this area been searched thoroughly around this point? Yes or no? And if you know any further additional stuff with Don Haley and uh, that document, what I showed you earlier in this video, is there any like association going on? Is it, you know, it, it, visually speaking, it just seems. Interesting, visually. This spot here. When you see the layers to it. Can I try and flip it again? Because I just want to make sure I've not missed anything out. Oh, come on. I don't know. It looks like a wash. But then again, it looks too wide. Um, I mean, it can open out. Uh, but there's like a direct trek isn't there so it can't be it can't be a wash what's that white stuff hmm is that some white is that trash hard to tell if you notice anything point it out down below in the chat comment section whatever It's weird, the land and the texture and the colouring of it and the depth. It's not smooth, is it? It's rough. Rugged. I think that'll do for her. So, leave your thoughts down below. Right, so I think that's it for now. What I'm going to do is, 
if possible, have some kind of outro for like a couple of minutes, just in case people need to finish talking. Because if we look at the video yesterday, some people were still chatting, but the stream ended. So I'll include that at the end, just in case people want to have unfinished business, right? I don't know if any naughty behaviours occurred in the chat today. As for those motels, we still need to take a look at, right? As for other videos, I'll just tell you on the spot where we're at. There is another map one we can do, and it is an interesting one, right? It's taking in mind all the places of interest, all the supposed location, locations which have not been searched by the police, by people in general, for whatever reason. Pinpoint those. If you have any locations you want to be searched on the maps, if there are any locations you know of which have not been investigated by the police when looking for Dylan, note them down below. I'll see if they're new or not, if they tie in with my list. And then we'll run through a video and map them all out to spread awareness about them. And maybe it might catch the attention of someone like Scott Natal, Alan Les Natal, who has watched a few of my videos, shout out to him, Ty Corbin, Lance Kelly, whoever, right? They're going to loosen eventually. Maybe these maps can direct them in certain areas. You never know. There's no harm. As for any other videos to look at, um... Maybe, like, the Candice Cooley one, with a plane flying on over. Not so, as I said, provided it's public information, if you know where Candice Cooley lives. But <laughs> I don't think it's worth doing that video, because if you think about it, it will appear as you're targeting her, right? And if she is coming after people within the case, people that have covered it, the ones out there who've had run-ins with Doug, then you don't want to direct it towards yourself. So maybe it's still not worth doing that one, just for the sake of it. As for the Find Dylan Rounds page, I have been on there recently, looking about. There's been zero updates, just the same support and sharing of photos. There was... One photo which was shared by Candice Cooley, which is an older one of Dylan Rounds with some kind of elf filter. I assume Candice Cooley is by the side of him. She looked different then in the photo. Kind of like the photo you previously saw of her standing next to Dylan, as Dylan was like wearing some kind of formal clothes and she look different in appearance, so I don't know why or how. I don't just mean the hair, I mean overall the face and everything. So uh, there's that. Um, anything else? I mean, you can say that like certain drama in the case has driven away people, that's for certain. Um, some people who might have watched my videos don't seem to be present anymore and same applies to other people's channels. Um, I guess we can do also one other discussion right now, just so things don't completely die, is when it comes to different people trying to look for Dylan. All these humans say they care about finding Dylan. They may all have different approaches. Some are quite forceful. Others are unrestrictive. Some are maybe not as proactive. Everyone has different roles and it seems evident that not everyone agrees with each other's presence, right? But if you put that aside, what other resistance or motive behind the resistance could there be, right? If everyone individually wants to find Dylan, but they don't agree with one another, is that just simply because they feel protective they don't want someone else stepping on in because they might mess it up and ruin the case? Or do they feel that if someone else steps into the case and finds Dylan, then 
it prevents them from getting the reward money. And really the only other motive would be you're involved in it in some way, but you don't like the idea of other people making progress because you're a part of this whole case of Dylan go missing and you want to prevent people from making progress. Really, they're the only three ideas going on. Um, do you have any motives, um, any explanations to why people would attack one another when trying to look for Dylan? Or is it, I mean, at some point you could have just said, well, it's everyone who's involved in trying to solve the case, but not actually going out there. So everyone online, on YouTube, all those attacks is expected and not a surprise. It's more to do with ego. It's more to do with trying to gain and amass the biggest following and growth, making it out from the Dylan Brown's case and branching and expanding from there and getting on top of others and putting other people down. You could say that at some point, but with people going out there physically and also receiving resistance and attacks, just like how people on YouTube do, and I'm not just saying it's people on YouTube um, directing the attacks out towards the people in person, because that would be another expected obvious thing actual people out there, actual people away from the internet also causing attacks because it's more spread out and it varies both online and offline. It's not some silly little drama. It's a bit more serious than that. So there must be a deeper motive to why these attacks are coming out. Either A, they don't like the fact somebody else is making progress because either they themselves want to make the progress and get a reward or it might incriminate them if the truth does come out. Or the other option, B, is they just feel that whoever is going on in could mess it up and some people get very protective even when it's not their own son. So it could be that as well. Will we get any other searches down the line? I guess that's the main question, isn't it? Well, one of them, one of the future questions. I guess if the case went cold, truly cold, and that was it, and then it was just the parents and the odd local stepping in once in a while, eventually you might get some YouTuber that appears on the scene. It happened with the Kenny Veach case not even established channels, just random people popping up and then uploading some videos of them searching out there over time. Like with Scott Natal, the reason why Scott Natal's channel exists on YouTube is the origins was from starting it up on the basis of searching for Kenny Veach and it's expanded and evolved ever since whilst looking for other people. What I would say is, whilst people are directing um, attacks criticising and calling out Lance like Doug is because Lance is looking for Dylan when he supposedly shouldn't because he's not been told to continue supposedly and Doug calling out Lance for looking for other missing people as well all of a sudden what's the point of that well if Lance is getting called out for doing all of that then how come no one's attacked Scott Natal? Scott Natal is looking for Dylan and Susan Powell and any other people out there. Scott Natal has associated himself with Ty Corbin and so on. I mean, as for Scott Natal himself, he never causes any trouble. He always stays away from the conflict and he just gets on and keeps his head down, which is a good thing. He's not a problem. He's a good person. And because he's a good person and he's not causing any trouble, it makes sense to why no one is attacking Scott Natal. But, you know, you put aside the bag and bones situation, Lance is kind of like Scott Natal for um, searching for the same, per same people. 
but Scott isn't called out, Lance is. So picking and picking and choosing, that's how it seems to be, right? And as I said previously, you'll get certain side taking, right? You want one ship or the other, as it sinks, you jump onto the next. And um, closer to time now, people have broken off into smaller cell groups, right? Who knows what will happen next or who will show up next? I guess the only other observation is, while she got these people splitting off and going on to different cell groups and smaller communities, I guess you could call it, more and more people branching off from these panels are now creating their own YouTube channels. And for the most part of it, most of these channels branching off, which were originally involved in the whole Dylan Brown's discussion, are now creating, call it their own chat channels slash drama channels. I guess it applies like that, like Bella V. She's branched off, now doing her own chats, live streams, but not directly to do with Dylan whatsoever, I believe. Cut and Shoot has supposedly started now. Um, who else is the Ranger? Kind of done the same thing. Is there anyone else? Certain people that might have called in on the Jim Terry's channel. So you could say that people have established themselves or attempting to with time all because of the Dylan Rounds case. Some people have interpreted, interpreted it as that way in a negative way by saying they're only doing it so they can expand themselves and benefit. Now, in terms of my reality, right, my channel already pre-existing since 2013, um, having a reasonable amount of subscribers when moving on into the Dylan Brown's case, I wasn't a complete nobody in a way, right, but if you look back to the Kenny Veach case, the only reason why my channel has the number of subscribers and total channel views, for the most part of it, is because of, you know, covering the Kenny Veach case. And then, with time, it, it grew slowly and then just carried on covering mystery videos because those videos seem to perform better on my channel, but as well if it can coincide with trying to solve a case or make sense of it or clear it up so it helps other people down the line when they look into it, then it's kind of like a win-win in a way. Um, but the reality of my channel is, and I apply it in most situations, is it tends to be all luck before skill and execution, right? People always word it as if you... Practice, 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 work hard, practice, 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 work hard, something good will happen. Not always. In my situation with YouTube, just in terms of growing it, in terms of like the numbers, the subscribers, I got lucky because it wasn't a deep plan to cover Kenny Veach, right? I've been interested in it for some time. I just decided to make a video on it because I thought, oh, I've just noticed something. Let's make this video and see if anyone else notices. And then I saw the views. I think it was like maybe 500, 600. And at the time, way more than I ever had. The views I would get on videos before Kenny Veach and the whole mystery series, you could call it. I'd get maximum 20, 20 views or less per video. So when covering that Kenny Veach one and it just showed like that 600 i was like oh i must have done something right i must have spotted something and then just focused my time on there so really it is luck and chance before skill the skill comes second once something happens then you just keep on top of it or try to and try and make different videos and areas and points of views and keep it going as long as you can for valid reasons so yeah that's how it's gone with me um in the future if i do move on to another case it will be interesting to see 
what the transition is like, whether um, you come across a, a new wave of individuals or chaos, or if it remains at a consistent rate, or it completely plummets, right? Got to be realistic, not delusionally positive. It could all go to shit at any point, right? That's one thing that always needs to be acknowledged. Now, is there any other channels out there that have issues with me? Not from what I know of. Supposedly speaking, the individual known as Agent Jessica. Mm -hmm. Continuing to make videos associated to do with me. Um, the level, I mean, not too much as an insult, but possibly, potentially, from interpretation, the levels of degeneracy by them kind of mirrored by certain editing of certain people within this case, the Dylan Browns one. Actions, behaviour mirrored, possibly the same exact person responsible. Mm -hmm. I mean, who knows what will happen next? I guess time will tell. We'll leave it there for now. If you have any questions or additional thoughts, if Indiana wants to share another poem or uh, Nella Bella wants to share another extract, feel free to do so. That's it for now. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time. Goodbye for now.